Hello, my name is Lindsay Young. Welcome to Agile Management. I'm with 18F and this training was created for the Office of Child Care at the US Department of Health and Human Services. This presentation is part of the Software Development, Procurement and Management course. It is a five part series that covers Agile Management, Product Ownership, User-Centered Design, Software Development Practices, and Agile Contracting. 18F is a technology and design consultancy for the US government inside the government. We're federal employees who teach partners how they can improve the user experience of government services by helping them build and buy technology. Uh, we share the same motivations as you, delivering great service to the public. A little about me, I have a unique perspective from working on cloud and modernization projects at agencies across the government. I've worked at the General Services Administration, the US Department of Justice, the US Department of Agriculture, the Housing and Urban Development, and the Federal Election Commission. I'm also a working mom who depends on childcare, so thank you all. Okay, let me tell you a bit about my first 18F project, a redesign of the Federal Election Commission website. The Federal Election Commission oversees laws on campaign finance and provides fundraising records to the public. The FEC had a demonstrably bad website. Um, and by that, I don't just mean it wasn't pretty enough. There were 14,000 pages of overlapping content and a staggering amount of data and forms. Uh, you couldn't link directly to information. Um, there had been some well-intentioned but misguided changes to the website. And unfortunately, the site was still vulnerable after a state actor had brought down the website during a government shutdown when there was no one to put it back up again. Uh, so there was consensus. The website needed to improve. And that was something that the commissioners at the FEC could agree on. So this was not my first Agile project of my career, but this project made me an Agile enthusiast. Uh, we used human-centered design, Agile, and modern business practices uh, and modern software practices um, in order to do this. We started small. We took on one subject at a time. Piece by piece, we created a user-centered website with modern infrastructure. The FEC estimates that they save 1.2 million a year on infrastructure costs. Um, and I have to say, it's really fun to work on a collaborative team. So today, uh, we're gonna start with that intro. We're wrapping that up right now. I'm gonna go over bad news and good news of different approaches to project planning. Um, I'm gonna be honest about the difficulty of the work and talk about how to improve using proven business practices. We're gonna go through opportunities to help identify when and where you can use agile practices to improve your work. We can go over uh, what to pro prioritize. Um, having good priorities is um, a foundational to success. Uh, we'll go through you know, am I doing it right? Even the best teams need some, need some modern, um, uh, moder need to be modern, monitored and adjusted. Um, and if you're doing this for the first time, it can be even harder. I will give you some signals of what success looks like and what to do if you're stuck in one of the many common pitfalls. Uh, finally, we're gonna look and put the pieces together um, to see agile projects holistically. And I just wanna be clear, this isn't a class on agile methodologies or ceremonies. Um, there are a lot of resources for that and I can recommend a few if you don't know where to start. Okay, so let's see. Uh, managing software projects is really hard, um, but leading a team using agile methodologies can help you succeed. Uh, so the traditional practices that are called waterfall practices um, I think are very familiar to people. Um, they generally have a long planning processes uh, that has a lot of lengthy lead time. So it starts off with months and months or even years of, um, you, of research into what the requirements should be. Um, it is really in, impossible to anticipate all needs or emergency situations that might arrive. Uh, documentation becomes a stand-in for progress. Um, so for long periods of times, uh, the only way you can tell if the project is going well is by reading reports. 
Um, and uh, stakeholder driven decisions um, aren't necessarily informed by user research. Uh, you will get what you asked for originally um, and not what you need now. And if this is a several year project, your needs might have changed quite a bit. Um, and adjustments are really hard to make. Um, and being honest, no matter what, this is hard work. So thank you for all that you do for childcare. Um, and there may be some problems that are outside of your control, and I want to acknowledge those. Um, many of you may be under-resourced, um, and you may be in a situation where you're bound by previous decisions. Um, unfortunately, there aren't any silver bullets. The good news is uh, you can make things better. There are best practices that can help. Small, frequent changes add up over time, and you're not alone in this journey. Uh, so let's talk about some best practices of research. Research shows that agile practices perform better than traditional waterfall practices. Um, in research from the Standish Group's Hayes report, only 13% of large government IT projects succeed. Um, so that, that might be scary, but let's think of things that we can do to help project success. Um, we can see from broader research, um, this, these statistics are from uh, Zippo, Zippa Agile um, and uh, the waterfall projects uh, across industry have about a 49% success rates where uh, agile products have a 64% success rate. So that's nearly one and a half times more successful. Um, there's also research that agile teams are 25% more productive. Um, so that is some good news. So before we get too in the weeds, what is Agile? Um, Agile is a philosophy where you listen to the people that you were trying to serve, you learn from your mistakes, and you keep trying. The goal of Agile is to frequently test what you build with people that will eventually use your product or service. Um, that way you don't make the wrong assumptions about what your customers need. You change your plans based on what you learn from your testing. You build things as, as early and as small as possible so when you make a mistake, you don't go too far in the wrong direction. You keep repeating your process. You keep learning, researching, and you change your approach or even your goal based on what you learn. In practice, Agile looks like building something small that can be completed within a few weeks and seeing if it's any good, then repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, as you can see on this diagram, uh, it's circular. So it's a circular process and not a linear process. So let's give uh, an example, uh, not a software example, but let's say you need to plan a much needed family vacation. Uh, your options for planning are no planning, waterfall planning, or agile planning. So no planning. Your family argues in circles on if you should rent a car or a boat. You don't know where you're going, so you don't know how to get there. As a result, you spend many nights speaking about the virtues and drawbacks of boats and cars but you never end up leaving the kitchen table. Waterfall. This is when you lay out the plan in full before you start. You decide and commit to every detail, every meal, every hotel, every gas station, and how much you'll spend on gas, how long you're gonna marvel at each natural wonder. This would be fine if there were never traffic delays, weather issues, pandemics, car problems, or interesting detours and stops along the way. Making small adjustments can cause huge ripple effects if something goes wrong and the whole trip might fail. Um, so agile planning is about planning in increments and accepting our inability as humans to perfectly perfect, predict the future. Um, agile has an end result in mind, maybe a time frame, but it only give, gets into the details as needed, which allows for change and response to new information. With Agile, you decide that you wanna drive from DC to San Francisco and you want it to take five days. And then you get in the car and you go. You can flex around construction and bypass snow. Uh, you can finalize your plan for the next day, the night before, and you can make changes as needed. You can even choose to end up in San Diego because you learned it was warmer and less expensive. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, what do agile activities look like on a software development team? 
Uh, the main things you want to see are like research, planning, uh, constantly making things, uh, learning from your mistakes, your mistakes, and keep trying, or we like to say iterating. So research is understanding the problem that you're trying to solve. Instead of only doing research up front, you need to continuously research what you need and what to do next. You also need to research that what you're, you're doing is actually solving the problem that you're trying to tackle. Um, watching people use your service or product is a great way to identify um, how to improve your product. Um, and we call those kinds of things usability and design research. Uh, you need to make sure that you're planning. So you need a large plan, which we usually do with uh, road mapping. And this is a clear vision from your product and identifying the major milestones you'll need to achieve and make your goals. Um, you'll need a lot of planning in between. That's generally sprint planning. And you're gonna describe the user stories that you're going to address, how you're gonna address them, and how you'll know if that task is finished. Um, you wanna make sure that you're making something. Uh, this might be a prototype. It could be something as simple as a drawing of the website that you want to build to see how people react to it. Um, it often is building, so you continuously wanna add working software to your project. Um, and it could be something like a, a service or a policy, um, but you wanna make sure that there are tangible outputs at every step of the way. Uh, you want to learn from your mistakes. Uh, identify when your assumptions are wrong. Uh, the team should regularly meet to think of ideas, how you can do things better, and uh, what kind of success you want to double down on. Uh, these kinds of meetings are usually called retrospectives or retros. Um, when there's an error or an incident, have a meeting not about blame, but about process improvement. Um, and these meetings in industry are often called postmortems. And finally, keep trying, uh, keep your feedback loop small and keep repeating these processes. Um, at the end, you wanna use observable working outcomes to measure success. Um, so we'd rather have a demo of how things are going instead of a stream of reports on progress. So there's uh, many agile methods, uh, two of the most popular are Scrum and Kanban. Scrum is breaking up into two week increments called sprints. Uh, this is a good stru uh, structure for projects um, and it's a great structure for new teams. Um, Kanban caps the number of tasks that are worked on at the same time. And it's more flexible. Um, if you have a help desk like workflow on your team already, um, Kanban can be a really good place to start. And uh, whatever, method that you're using, you should have product, product roadmaps and meet regularly to research, plan, and learn. Um, if you're new to Agile, I would say start with structure, pick a method and stick to it for a while. Um, start small, uh, use pilots, start with one team, those kinds of things. Uh, keep in mind transitions take time. Um, it takes time to do contracting, to hire, to change policies, um, and all those things are really important. Uh, and I think most importantly, try to support a collaborative culture. Uh, you need to prove to people that it's okay to make mistakes. Uh, you really need to make sure that absolutely everyone on the team uh, knows that their ideas and perspectives are welcome and that you want them to contribute. Um, value and praise leaders that help their teams grow um, over individual success. Um, and again, just thinking about the team as a whole and how uh, you can make sure that everyone is shining. So let's talk about opportunities. Um, so no matter what part of the project life cycle you're in, you can start applying some agile methodologies. Um, basically just do what you can when you can. So if you're starting a new project feature initiative, uh, it's really important to double check that you're solving the right problem. Uh, if you're building agile teams through contracting or staffing, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right people and making the right agreements. Uh, if you're, when you're managing agile projects, you wanna make sure that you're using the proven business practices where you can. You wanna encourage your team to grow their skills and you wanna ensure accountability. 
Um, now these high level goals are easy to aspire to and very hard to achieve. Um, and so I'm gonna give you agile implementation tips that I learned the hard way. So again, starting off, making sure that you're solving the right problems. Uh, that means making sure that the problem that you're choosing is small. Uh, if you have a large pro problem, that's great. You just wanna break it into smaller, more approachable pieces. Um, always ask if there's an easier way to solve the problem than the first idea you think of. Um, and uh, definitely ask if you need to build anything at all. Uh, sometimes it's easy to think of the problem you have as an extension of your current system. Um, but you know, how else can you solve these problems uh, that, that can give you, uh, that can save you a lot of money finding out that you actually don't need a tool for a particular need. Um, and as you're looking at these problems and trying to prioritize them, think about what we can do now that adds the most value to our users. Okay, now I'm gonna get into building an agile team um, and the rules that you'll need for that. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna start off with the pro product owner. This is extremely important. Um, we recommend a empowered subject matter expert and they need to be able to make decisions and guide the product. Um, I just wanna be clear that this is really a full-time commitment. Um, and this also should be an employee uh, since they're going to be making important decisions. Um, and the product owner doesn't need to be technical. Uh, they need to understand the user needs, uh, work with the rest of the team and create a vision for the product. Um, a product vision isn't a feature popularity contest. Uh, it describes the overall flow and purpose of the product. Um, and luckily, we're going to go into depth with the product owner talk that she will give next. Uh, so then I want to talk about the, um, a project manager or a scrum master. Um, this kind of role whoever it might be, is gonna be your masters of uh, ceremonies. This might be your product owner, depending on your team structure, um, but it can often be a different person. Um, and this person needs to track from the user need uh, to production to make sure that is going smoothly. Uh, if this is your first Agile project, I would try and insist on someone with experience and not just a certification. Uh, once you have the rhythms of Agile established, the whole team can help a beginner get up to speed. Uh, so a technical lead, uh, and I wanna stress this is not a tech, like a traditional technical architect uh, because we really want more involvement from the entire team to solve problems. Uh, communication is key to success for this role, communicating with that. Um, a uh, product owner, making sure they understand technical trade-offs and decisions, um, communicating with the larger enterprise, making sure that um, you're meeting all of your commitments. Um, technically, it's, uh, it's really important. Um, and this person is gonna help advise on solutions and make sure that quality standards are being met. Um, I suggest that you hire a tech lead if you can. Um, it's good for accountability and oversight. Um, and if you can't, then you'll want a different vendor than the main team. Um, it's hard to hire for technical talent um, if you don't have that area of ex expertise, uh, but in my experience, it is worth it. And we're gonna go in depth into the challenge of, uh, of the technical aspects of the project um, in Greg's software development practices. Uh, design. So this is extremely important to your product um, and it can be overwhelming because there are so many types of design. Um, and in my experience, if you only get to choose one speciality, uh, user experience is the best place to start. Um, that will help with all of your usability testing um, and help with, with that problem solving mindset. Um, if you have the opportunity, products benefit extremely uh, from visual designers and content designers. Um, just keep in mind, if you don't have designers, you're still gonna have to make design choices. 
And that's going to impact the ease of use and the success of your product. So whoever's making those choices will benefit from any additional design knowledge. Um, and thankfully, we're going to go into depth on this topic in Janelle's user-centered design talk. Okay, um, and you'll need more, more roles than that on any team, especially for software. Uh, you'll definitely need engineers. Um, you will also need, might need writers, lawyers, um, and other contributors. Contributors. It's gonna be based on the needs of your project. Um, and this is probably gonna be a blend of staff and contractors, depending on your needs. Uh, some considerations is to try to keep total team sizes in the three to nine range. Um, if you have more than that, splitting up into sub teams is helpful. Um, and meetings take up a lot of time. So if you only uh, have someone on half time, they're only gonna be able to do a quarter of the productivity. Um, so keep that in mind and plan accordingly. Um, and uh, for managing agile projects, uh, what you really wanna think of is, uh, to, to whether you're being agile or not, is asking yourself um, if you're doing these following things. You frequently test what you build with people who eventually use your product or service. You change your plans based on what you learn from your testing. You build things as early and as lean as possible so you get, don't get too far ahead of your user feedback. Um, the value of using Agile and modern software practices together is that um, stakeholders, collaborators, and implementers agree on measurable outcomes. You have more information and context for decisions when they're getting made because you didn't do all of your planning in advance. Um, and you can course correct quickly with fewer bureaucratic bottlenecks. Um, one really important part of Agile is cross-functional teams. Um, and what we mean by that is collaboration across disciplines. We want the whole team talking together to tackle problems. Um, you wanna use your whole team's brain to solve that. Um, and a really important tip is to always include your security team from the beginning. Um, let, they, let them know what the project is as it grows and you're gonna have a lot easier time at the end when you're trying to get out the door. Okay, so what to prioritize? This is really important. Um, and if everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. Um, prioritization is foundational to good management and leadership. I'm gonna give you some suggestions on next steps to evolve your product or program. So if you don't know where to start, um, improving processes, clarifying language, focusing on customer experience, removing heavyweight control processes, defining outcomes and holding your uh, project accountable are all really good places to start. Okay, I'm gonna get into depth into what those mean. So as an example, when I was working with the Department of Justice on civil rights abuse reporting, uh, they defined, uh, and improved their internal processes while we added efficiencies in our technical product. Um, and they were really committed to making the experience for the public and staff better. Um, and between all of those things, the uh, medium time to close rate dropped by 70%. So that means a lot less time for people waiting on answers about their complaints to the DOJ. Um, please keep in mind that you can't make a system that's better than its underlying workflow. Uh, that is why workflow is such a great place to start. Um, please use any technical project as an excuse to improve your processes. Um, I love doing that. Uh, and don't uh, reinforce a bad process with a shiny new system. So if you want to think about where to start improving processes, um, look for bottlenecks, redundant approvals, and places where it's not clear to users what the next step should be. Uh, look to, we really have to work together with all your stakeholders to streamline and simplify your processes. Um, and this might be a bigger uh, lift and require larger policy changes, uh, but it's worth it. So language, um, kind of going back to that FEC project, um, that website started off with a reading score that made it more difficult than the Harvard Law Review to read. 
Um, and by the time our work was done, it ended up at a ninth grade reading level. Um, and so this was a huge improvement. Um, there's also a huge um, issue with duplicate content. Um, someone would call in and they'd have a question and a department would want to be you know, very helpful and they would post the answer to that question on their part of the website. And someone with the same question might call in to a different department and that department would wanna be helpful. So they would then have that same answer in a different part of the website phrased slightly differently. Um, and you do that enough times, I mean, it causes a lot of confusion for the users because they don't know if they found all of the content they need before they can make a decision. Um, so as part of that redesign, there was a lot of um, deduplication. De um, and for example, we looked at the existing content uh, for instructions on how to comply with uh, campaign finance regulations. And that started out at about 16,000 words. And at launch, it was fewer than 4,000. Um, so for plain language, um, really use that plain language. Think about who your audience is and what kind of language that would help, uh, what kind of language they're used to. Um, remove an archive contact that is old or not needed. Um, that can be very confusing for people. Uh, you know, walk, work with content designers if you have the opportunity. It's, uh, it's it really makes the work uh, shine. Um, and think about so supporting additional languages to uh, reach a wider audience. Okay, um, prioritizing the experience of people using the, the so software. Uh, so let's say you have a choice between working on a dashboard for executives or shaving seven seconds off of each data entry. I would say work on the small widespread improvements first. Um, you can always go back to additional improvements later. Um, when you're making these kinds of choices, managing up is extremely important. You wanna teach stakeholders to make decisions based on testing and not just executive input. Uh, if you are the executive, keep the conversation focused on user needs um, and let your product owner make decisions that get you to an agreed upon outcome. Um, also, uh, reinvent or remove change control boards. Um, replace change control boards with regular communication with decision makers when you can. Um, at ETNF, we use a weekly ship model, which we report out uh, in a concise way on what, is, what we've done and what we're doing next for the project every week. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is that organizations with heavy weight change processes are 2.6 times more likely to be low performers. Um, and that stat comes from the Accelerate State of DevOps 2019. Um, and that's a worldwide study on from 31,000 worldwide uh, respondents. So um, accountability to outcomes, this is really important. Um, first, you really need to define the outcome that you're looking for. Could be something like reduced wait times, more responses, more engagement, fewer help desk calls, um, but have a goal in mind. Um, with those goals, then you can go to metrics. Uh, so for metrics, less is more to keep uh, prioritization clear. Don't try, choose too many metrics because it will reduce the clarity of your larger goals. Um, don't choose metrics without a goal in mind and a reason why this achieving this metric will get you to your goal. Um, and reassess your metrics regularly to make sure you're measuring the right thing rather than shifting the problem to a different metric. So if you have a cue here, um, you don't want to just measure that and then have the same amount of work and wait time just shift to a different cue. Uh, you wanna make sure you're, you're looking at that holistically. Um, and uh, you want an uh, enforceable quality assurance plan uh, with clear standards. Um, and Randy is gonna go into that in agile contracting, which will be great. Um, and I recommend that when uh, things go wrong, using it as an uh, opportunity to learn. So this is things like postmortems or just those blameless meetings uh, where we try to learn from our mistakes and make processes better for the team so that they don't happen again. Okay, am I doing it right? 
Um, I'm gonna go over some signs of good project health, uh, and then we're gonna dive into what we can learn from bad signs. And don't worry, for bad signs, I'll give you some suggestions on how to address the causes. So good signs. The whole team collaborates on solutions and implementation ideas. You're adding or improving your product in production at least every two weeks. You catch mistakes early and quick, fix them quickly. You change your plans based on usability testing. So are all great things. Okay, next. Uh, here are some very bad, very common bad signs. Um, and I'll tell you how to address them. So the signs are uh, one person makes all the decisions and architecture choices. You have many inflexible deadlines for features over the next few years. Tasks or tickets take multiple sprints. Things keep getting pushed to the next sprint. It is hard to make a change or roll back a change. Large, there's a large backlog of bug reports. You're flooded with change requests and upcharges. Um, you feel like you're doing the same process, uh, but the meetings were just renamed. Okay, let's dig in. So one person making all the decisions. Um, we This is a sign that you need to work on creating a more collaborative culture. Uh, people really need to know that it's safe to contribute and people need to know that their opinion is valued. Um, lots of times people are in this kind of situation because of some pa past experience um, at the organization where they were told that their you know, opinion wasn't needed or they weren't at the, the right person to say something. Um, so um, undoing that takes a lot of work. Um, you, it is a lot about trust building. Um, and when we talk about culture, that's, that's what we're talking about is, is building trust. Okay, many inflexible deadlines. Um, if you have a lot of inflexible deadlines for features over the next few years, um, you still do need to transition away from waterfall. Um, you want to replace these plans with the project roadmap. Again, that's having a, a clear goal in mind and having the main milestones that you need to get to that goal. But tasks take more than two weeks. Um, if your tasks and tickets are taking multiple sprints and things keep uh, getting pushed to the next sprint, so a few things you can do. Um, spend more time breaking tasks into smaller pieces. Uh, there's meetings called backlog grooming that can help. Um, you can also have things like making templates for your tickets that prompt more detail on what outputs are expected. Um, so just making sure that when people are starting a task, they have a clear understanding of what it is. Um, so, you know, how, what is the user story? Um, understanding how this benefits the end user is something we want everyone on the team to understand for every task. Um, understanding what the end result is from the beginning, that's, that's to get everyone on the same page. Um, and having a clear, verifiable definition of what done means really helps. Um, commonly, um, don't spend months of research on the beginning of a project. Uh, research is really important. You do research in the beginning, but you need to keep researching um, and it's very common to see people keep their waterfall plans and just replace the requirements gathering with front-loaded user research. Um, this is an improvement, but uh, if you don't change the way that you work, you're not going to see all the benefits of Agile. Once you confirm that you're solving the right problem, get something useful to production as quick as you can. You need to keep uh, researching your product during the entire life cycle. Um, you want to be continually verifying that your assumptions um, are correct, and you want to continually be thinking of new solutions. Um, and it's really better to start something now and find out that it's wrong or necessary now instead of three months from now when you realize that you did a whole bunch of unnecessary research, or even worse, three years from now when you built the wrong thing. So uh, if you notice that it's hard to make a change or roll back a change, uh, like undo a change, uh, that really means that you need more of those modern uh, software practices, often called DevOps or DevSecOps. Um, these kinds of things are source control, managing data migrations, documentation, and tests. Um, and by tests, we mean automated testing. Um, and we'll go more into modern software practices like DevOps in the Agile software 
uh, module. Okay, you have a large backlog of book reports. Um, the first thing to try is to make sure you're prioritizing the fundamentals before feature requests um, that because you want to shift to making sure that like you have a quality um, product and a strong foundation. Uh, this can be just a sign that you're understaffed, um, which is, is hard and you, you know, have to sometimes just solve that root cause. Um, and the worst case scenario is that you actually do need to replace your system. Um, if you notice that you're flooded with change requests and upcharges, uh, you really do need to change your contract structure um, to allow for agile methods. Um, and Randy will be going over that in depth uh, in the agile contracting part. Um, and finally, it, it feels the same. Um, if you feel you like you're doing the same process, but meetings were renamed, um, that's a sign that you still need to transition away from waterfall practices. Um, a good place to start is replacing uh, those detailed plans with the project roadmap um, and really focusing on culture, uh, how to make meetings more collaborative. Uh, this is you know, help, really helpful and sets the tone um, of that culture change. If you feel like something's wrong, um, it's really good to listen to your feelings. Uh, ask yourself why you feel this way. Um, are you out of your comfort zone or are there some doubts hanging over you? If you feel that things aren't working, talk to your team about them openly. Talk about why you think that things are not working and frame the discussion around what it would take to make sure you meet your end goals. Okay, now we get a feel for agile management. Let's try and put those pieces together. Okay, uh, so to get the full benefits of agile management, you wanna make sure that you have a solid product ownership and vision. You need somebody to steer the ship and this takes a lot of time. Uh, that person needs to learn how to be a product owner. This can be through experience or education. Um, and that owner needs to have a capable team to deliver. Um, and this requires a combination of hiring and contracting. Um, for user-centered design practices, um, your team needs to know how to get user feedback and how to take action on that feedback. Um, and you need to understand good design problems or good design patterns. Um, you do need the uh, modern software development practices and technical oversight. You need to know how to build things in smaller pieces, uh, which is something that you do have to learn if it's something you haven't done before. Um, Knowing how to make changes quickly, that takes a whole lot of work um, up front uh, to get those changes quickly made later. Um, you do need someone to help tell you the quality of a procurement uh, proposal, and you need someone to help assess the quality of your software and advise as you're building. Um, with agile co contracting, uh, getting the team in place, you know, who you need people who have the right skills and they need to know how to build things in an agile way or learn how to build things in an agile way. So unfortunately we don't have silver bullets for you, but we do have more uh, of this series to go over the fundamentals. Uh, next we have product ownership, then user-centered de design, software development practices, and agile contracting. I hope you enjoyed our time together and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have in the upcoming Q&A sessions. Goodbye.